I thought it was gone. I, now I, you know where it was. You were pretty slick. I don't know how you did that. I'm going to be. Well, yeah, you don't want to but where do you leave your clothes at, Charlie? Well, <laughs> well I tell you right now. I, I had extra laundry upstairs. Next, next time, next time I hear some little funny noises around, I you figure. It's not a mouse, you know. Yeah, I'm sure. You're getting your shirt out of pocket. <clears throat> oh, boy. Your pastor down there stealing your stuff. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I was running late today. Yeah. You're all right. Too much stuff going on, let me tell you. Don't be telling me you're all right. Make me feel bad. You're late. You're late. Why? You're late. You're late. I wasn't late. You said I've been running late all day. He's late. Uh, what's the matter with you? I'm late. I'm late for a very, very important date. <laughs> tick -tock, tick -tock, tick -tock. Yeah. Uh, well, Lord, you got to have a sense of humor. Look at us. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're all a mess. <laughs> we, <laughs> well, speak for thyself. Oh, I speak for everybody. <laughs> oh, it's, hard. it's hard to be humble when you're perfect and everything. You know, right. you know, isn't it the truth, though? We should know, don't we? Don't That's one of my favorite songs. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> Well, Lord God, we come this evening in thanksgiving as always. We want to praise and glorify you and what we do here. Father, I just ask that you use me as an instrument to learn. We have the study we've done here. And just show us the things you want us to know so that we can better your kingdom and we can understand what we're doing. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. Again, it's just to glorify you in Jesus' name. Uh, amen to that. Oh, boy. Well, gee whiz, back there, we, uh, <laughs> we're going to have to catch you up here some, aren't we? She said, that's all right. You don't need to. You don't want to spend three hours? <laughs> no, she said it's okay. We ain't got no worry, you know. They can stay, and you can catch them up. Well, you just lay over and take a nap. <laughs> now, because we do repeat quite a bit. Repeat and repeat, you know. Yeah. But uh, figure it helps us a little bit. I do have some things to read, though, ahead of it. I like to. You don't mind, do you? Okay. If you do, why? I won't do it. Did you get my that song I sent to you? Did you find that? I don't. I don't think. On I Messenger? No. Okay. I'll find it then. What's the name? Sometimes of Messenger doesn't quite do it. I don't know why. It's here. I am. It's a Catholic song. Mm -hmm. I told him. I think that it. May okay. be related to Isaiah. I don't know what he was saying. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, some of these are a little longer, so I, I I'll be careful about it. Well, wait. <laughs> Will you quit London. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got it. Okay. Uh, Very nice, Charlie. Well, tomatoes are ripe right now. Yeah, man. I love <laughs> tomatoes. Well, I'd rather <laughs> that be hard and hurt. They yeah, might, you know, I like eating tomatoes bread. and onions just by still. Do you? Oh, yeah. Sherry made tomatoes, onions, and cucumbers. Mm. And I tried dressing. Well, I found something here that maybe I should have snooped it just to see if indeed it's really true. Mm -hmm. But it had to do with Einstein. And, and it said that he had written two letters to his daughter. And he had told her not to open them up for at least I'd like 20 years on one and then been go another 20 years. Wow. His point to it was that he didn't think that society was ready to grasp it this way. I don't think Siri is <clears throat> that far out. <laughs> but if he indeed really did this, it's quite interesting because my, if I'm not mistaken, I think they always said he was an atheist. Really? What I'd heard. Einstein? Well, yeah, I already I talked a lot about the possibility of us well, not being Listen able. to the first letter. Now, how can we check this out? Well, well if this is true, and I have no reason to think that it is. <laughs> he probably didn't even have a daughter. It's a son. Well, it's something about the human being. <clears throat> Probably his dog. Yeah. Could have been. <laughs> Somebody who could remember the next Somebody could, open something yeah, in the next 20 yeah, years. Yeah, and actually read something, you know what I mean? What if she would have died? Yeah, That's well, a, that, then would have that I don't know. Well, you didn't think too far ahead, did I, I don't what ask years? me. He, oh, he, he probably years? had a second out there. 
he probably had a backup. Oh, he probably did. He probably had another daughter. <laughs> well, here's what it said. <laughs> I, I better get a drink. Of you better go ahead with that before we get carried away. <clears throat> what do you mean get carried away? <laughs> No, I mean literally. Get I thought out. you meant they were going to carry me away. That <laughs> <laughs> probably will happen. It says in the late 18, or 1980s, mm -hmm. Lazari, who was the daughter of the famous genius, donated 1,400 letters that were written by Einstein oh, wow. to the Hebrew University with orders not to publish their contents. So there's a lot more than what I said until two decades after his death. Okay. So this is one of them. It okay. was written to her. He says, he says this. He says, when I proposed the theory of relativity, but very few understood me. And and what I will reveal now to transmit to mankind will also collide with the misunderstanding and prejudice in the world. He says, I ask you to guard the letters as long as necessary, years, decades, until society is advanced enough to accept what I will explain below. This is an extremely powerful force that so far science has not found a formal explanation to. And it is a force that includes and governs all others and is even behind any, pheno any, <laughs> any phenomenon operating in the universe and has not yet been identified by us. Hmm. The uni universal force is, and that's it. That's it, huh? No. She waited 20 years for that. <laughs> I actually thought that was probably real. <laughs> <coughs> the universal force is love. Oh. He said, when scientists looked for a unified theory of the universe, they forgot the most powerful unseen force. Love is light that enlightens those who give it and receive it. And love is gravity because it makes some people feel attracted to others. Love is power because it multiplies the best we have. And it allows humanity not to be extinguished in their blind selfishness. Mm -hmm. Love unfolds and reveals. Mm -hmm. And I think about what the Bible calls love. You know, mm -hmm. Then we find out there's so many different kinds of what we kind of thought. Love is God and God is love. He said the, this force explains everything and gives meaning to life. And this is the variable that we have ignored for too long. Maybe because we're afraid of love because it is, only en is the only energy in the universe that man has not learned to drive at will. Mm -hmm. To give visibility to love, I made a simple substitution in my most famous equation. If instead of E equals MC squared, we accept that the energy to heal the world can be obtained through love multiplied by the speed of light squared. Mm -hmm. Anybody understand what that means? You know what it means to square something. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we know what a square is. It's not what you're looking at Where's the when you man? stop. Where's you know, you must have really been something we, in school. We know it's I can well imagine you know, just, you two. I, I was very quiet in school. And Frida's back there just. Yeah, me too. She was <laughs> probably, rowdy. probably the most rowdy of all of them. Yeah, rowdy. <laughs> okay, I'm anyway. That's next to Dolesville. <laughs> so we arrive at the conclusion that love is the most powerful force there is because it has no limits. Mm -hmm. And after the failure of humanity and the use and control of the other forces of the universe that have turned against us, it is urgent that we nourish ourselves with another kind of energy. We want our species to survive. And if we are to find meaning in life, we want to, we want to save the world and every sentient uh, being that in, uh, inhibits it, us, Love is the one and only answer. And perhaps we're not ready to make a bomb of love, of advice powerful enough to entirely destroy the hate, the selfishness, and greed that devastate the planet. However, each individual carries within him a small but powerful generator of love whose energy is waiting to be released. So when we learn to give and receive this universal energy, dear Lazare, we will have affirmed that love conquers all and is able to transcend everything and anything because love is the quintessence of life. I deeply regret not having been able to express what is my heart, which has quietly beaten for you all my life. Maybe it's too late to apologize, but as time is relative, I need to tell you that I love you, and thanks to you, I've reached the ultimate answer. I thought, now that's quite something, isn't it? I've always heard that he was an atheist, but... 
So you got the second letter there, Charlie? Well, I didn't know. Oh, I wanted to hear what the second one was. Well. <laughs> oh, see, you're messing me up. I had it all ready to go. Okay, here's this. Aren't you glad you came to Bible study? Yeah, so far. <laughs> <coughs> I don't know who wrote this, but for those of us that are up in age, <laughs> and you know those you youngins, of course, won't get it. But it's like this. And it's winter, you know. Time's that way of moving very quick, catching you. Under where the years have went by. I don't know about you, but I wonder what happened to yesterday anyway. It seems just yesterday that I was young. You got to listen to all this. You tell me if you, any of this hits you. I don't think there's a darn thing here that I haven't had happen to me. Mm. But it seems like just yesterday that I was, uh, was young, just married, and embarking on my new life with my mate. Yet in a way, it seems like eons ago, and I wonder where all the years went. I know that I lived them all. I have glimpses of how it was back then and all of my hopes and dreams, but here it is. The winter of my life and it catches me by surprise. How did I get here so fast? And where did the years go and where did my youth go? <laughs> I remember well seeing older people through the years and thinking that those older people were years away from me and that winter was so far off that I could not fathom it or imagine fully what it would be like. But here it is. By the way, this goes along with a bit with Teresa's book as far as being right with the Lord. There is a correlation here, a parallel to it. Anyway, not like the ones that I remember who were young and vibrant, but like me, their age is beginning to show. And we are now those older folk that we used to see and never thought we, we, we'd be. I don't think, I don't know when I'll be that. Stop. Each day now, I find that just getting a, a shower is a real target for the day. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's a darn truth. <laughs> it is. <clears throat> and taking a nap is not a treat anymore. It's mandatory. <laughs> yeah. And because if I don't, on my own free will, I'll just fall asleep where I sit. Yeah. And yeah. And so now I enter into this new season of my life, unprepared for all the aches and pains and the loss of strength and ability to go and do things that I wish I'd done but never did. But at least I know that through the winter, though the winter's come, I'm not sure how long it will last. This I know, when, when it's over on this earth, it's not over. A new adventure will begin. Yes, I have regrets. There are things I wish I hadn't done, things I should have done, but indeed there are many things I'm happy to have done. It's all in a lifetime. So if you're not in your winter yet, let me remind you that it will be here faster than you think, youngins. And uh, so whatever you would like to accomplish in your life, please do it quickly. Don't put things off too long. Life goes by quickly, so do what you can today as you can never be sure whether this is your winter or not. And you have no promise that you'll see all the seasons of your life. So live for today. Say all the things that you want your loved ones to remember and hope that they appreciate and love you for all the things that you have done for them in all the years past. Life is a gift to you. The way you live your life is your gift to those who come after. Make it, make it a fantastic one. Live it well. Enjoy today. Do something fun. Be happy. And have a great day. Because remember, it is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. So live happy in this year and every year. Lastly, consider the following. Today is the oldest you've ever been, yet the youngest you'll ever be. So enjoy this day while it lasts. Your kids are becoming you. No, I know. Very nice. <laughs> but, nice uh, reminder. Well, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Sounds like Harvey was talking. Oh, Paul Harvey? Mm -hmm. Good day. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> you sound like it. You read that, too. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I won't do this. But I do have to read this, and then we'll get into it. I, uh, <laughs> You don't have to. Yes, I do. No, you need to say when you're done. I got it. Good it's so important. And good night. <laughs> well, you know, because we get into the study and it's boring. So yeah, I thought well, this. Just pray it's like a story. I'm ready to go now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call.
There you go. You have to do all that over because I wouldn't listen. That's <laughs> pretty tough, isn't it? It's like we play in dances. We used to do it. A guy come up and say, would you play such and such a piece? And so we, well, we'll get to it here in a minute, you know. And so we do another tune or whatever, and then we go into the new piece, and he comes back, well, when are you going to play it? <laughs> I said, well, we did 10 minutes ago. Well, I couldn't. I had to go to the bathroom. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, I'm you'd have held it. Life's kind of rough. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here it is. Here it is. Now, Pastor will appreciate it. He will all appreciate it, I think. I, maybe not. <clears throat> the Presbyterian Church called a meeting to decide what to do about their squirrel infestation. And after much prayer, and this is funny because I thought I had that last year. I had Terminex in there and everything else. No squirrels. It didn't cost me anything, though. After much prayer and consideration, they concluded that the squirrels were predestined to be there and they shouldn't interfere with God's divine will. So at the Baptist church, the squirrels had taken an interest in the baptistry. The deacons met and decided to put a water slide on the baptistry and let the squirrels drown them, uh, uh, drown themselves. Well, the squirrels, they liked the slide and unfortunately knew instinctively how to swim. <laughs> so twice as many squirrels showed up the following week. The Lutheran church, they decided that they were not, and, and this is not against any particular church, it's a joke. Okay? So the Lutheran church decided that they were not in a position to harm any of God's creatures. So they humanely trapped their squirrels and set them free near the Baptist church. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks later, the squirrels were back when the Baptist took down the water slide. <laughs> but the Catholic church came up with a very creative strategy. They baptized all the squirrels and made them members of the church. There you go. Yeah. Now they only see them at Christmas and Easter. <laughs> No, oh, <laughs> we're not done yet. Okay, not so much was heard from the Jewish synagogue. They took the first squirrel and circumcised him, and they haven't seen a squirrel since. Oh, <laughs> Chased him all away. <laughs> well, well, you just had to do it, you know. Could have put Palm Sunday. In. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? You can't keep them down on the farm. So That's right. I just haven't had enough coffee yet. Okay. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me get rid of this here. Well, we were up to uh, chapter 14. Mm -hmm. And you know, Frida, it's just like. All of these, we talked about how the first half of the prophetic books are pretty much the judgment of the nations and so forth. The last half becomes restoration, and you know, and that's true, most all of them. But we've been digging pretty deep. But I, I got to say, a fella checked into the net this morning, and he has a, a program he does on the internet on Saturday nights of... Uh, the same kind of thing. He said they're digging really deep into it, and he's realizing how important today that is because of where we are. That's right. Just amazing. It's just so amazing. <clears throat> but we're getting down here to uh, this is kind of the prologue to the translation of chapter 14, 1, and 1 through 2. And uh, we, we should go there. Let's go ahead and read it. And then uh, we'll go down and talk about it a little bit as we go along. In fact, what we probably should do, let's just read down to one through four. <clears throat> it says, when the, Lord, when the Lord will have compassion on Jacob and again chose Israel and settled them in their own land, then strangers will join them, strangers, and attach themselves to the house of Jacob. And the peoples will take them along and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel will possess them as an inheritance in a land of the Lord as male servants, female servants, and they will take their, cap, uh, their captors captive and will rule over their oppressors. And it will be in that day when the Lord gives you rest from your pain and turmoil and harsh service in which you have been enslaved, that you will take up this taunt 
what taunting is, I assume, against uh, the king of Babylon and will say this, how the oppressor has ceased and how the fury, the fury rather, has ceased. Not just proverb. Mm -hmm. Where? Take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Okay. Well, it's information. Mm -hmm. That's what it's talking about. Yeah. I think taunt, and I haven't studied that. I, I didn't. I haven't read where it says proverbs, but there might be a reason here for that. I think, uh, to me, the word taunt anyway is a lot stronger word than proverbs, yeah. and I think it's probably trying to tell you that. I'm, yeah. I'm assuming. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> the prophet then begins this or this oracle in 14 with a kind of a brand new word of comfort and hope for Israel and it's li in line with the theme remember of a remnant will return so he declares then in this that God's going to uh, well he has mercy on them he restores them uh, to their land and even more than that they're going to rule over the oppressors so when, when we get into uh, verse 3 and 4 then the we're talking about the righteous can anticipate very with a lot of confidence here that the Lord's judgment is going to be on the evil oppressors. So that passage, as you see, begins with the words of comfort and hope that for the righteous who are going to endure suffering and the oppression that's in the world at the hands of the, of the wicked people who rule and terrorize the world. And we're in it now even. It doesn't seem to stop, does it? <clears throat> Have you heard the latest? You know who the squad is? No. Squad? <clears throat> Did you say squad? Yes. Squad. <clears throat> they keep coming up with this stuff. People just get out there and decide they'll call themselves something. Really? Yeah, and then the news media puts it on there as if it had been on there forever and a day. I know, like, you're supposed to know who it is. Yeah, that way, yeah. you know. It's those four Muslim girls oh, that are yeah. in the... Even though I knew who it was, <laughs> And right. Pelosi might as well go home. They're actually calling yeah. us. And they're allowing those girls to do this. Yeah, yeah. they are. That's nuts. It is Well, nuts. but the latest on that was uh, the House has put the impeachment on the table. So oh, yeah. they were voting to impeach today. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. They put it out there. Huh? They, yeah, they put it on the table, though. They well, couldn't get enough votes. Can you imagine? Very but this squad is that part it's of not working yeah, the Congress that yeah. is doing all this. So. I know. Emmanuel Cleaver walked out of the whole thing. It did. He said, I relinquish it. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, come on. I mean, there's few communists. Things? It's all communist stuff. So. <laughs> I, just can't be, I just can't believe that they are uh, they voted the taxpayer for them. money by all vote. this nonsense. What makes no sense to me is they're Muslim women. Yeah. If Muslims ruled this country, they would not be where they're at right now. <laughs> oh my goodness! And I probably shouldn't. But say they're this. getting in. Well, you know they're part of the Muslim Brotherhood. You know that. Fox yeah. sends me updates on my Facebook. You, everybody's seen them. But I, I looked to see what people were saying about it last night, and there were several comments. Did her husband? Did her husband say she could say that? Or? <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Well, you seen the billboards going up, didn't you? About 9-11. Oh, no. How 19 Muslims killed 3,200. Oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody sent me a list of the various things that they've done. Only 17 to 19 people killed over almost 3,000. Christian organizations doing that. This woman, did you see her with this Muslim girl came into a meeting all by herself and started griping about Yes. Being wrong and all that, and this yes. gal, she says, "I'm glad you brought that up." Because yeah. they were in there talking about Benghazi and those four right. men that died, and that that Muslim girl wasn't going to talk about that at all. Mm -hmm. Boy, did she ever stop that! Had the woman put her in a place because she, uh, uh, she said she went down through the whole list, the Nazis, and mm -hmm. just all the way down that because. One of the Nazis and the Japanese and the Chinese and all that, the, the horrendous things they've done to their people, yet the silent majority were irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And that's what you finally got, too. Mm -hmm. It's it's a, it's a minority that's doing all of this, and the, si and the majority say it in silent like this. Yeah. They're irrelevant. They don't matter. 
see Robbie Zachariah put a Muslim in her place, boy, real fast. I did too. <laughs> well, I didn't realize that that AOC girl. I didn't realize she was a refugee, and she's griping about. She was us. allowed to go to college and stuff here. Yeah. That Ilhan Omar is who you're thinking about. Oh, I'm sorry. She was yeah. allowed to go to college and stuff, and had got sent back because her dad was got in a lot of trouble. He was in their government and all that. He was some kind of a um, liaison between the United States and some stuff went on, and they were transferred back. To, yeah, so she yeah, hates this country. We're gonna thank Obama. They, she blames us. Well, yeah. you. She blames us for. I'm blaming my better. It's just crazy when you stop. Like this fellow that has the show I was telling about earlier. Uh, he said, "Well, he said we're." We are paralleling today with the back in those days through the prophecies because we can just see it plain as day. And I said, oh, I know yeah. it. I said, we are too. Mm -hmm. And you're starting to see all of this. Uh, this kind of stuff we're talking about, I don't know specifics that happened back in those days. I haven't gotten that far in it. But don't you got to know they had to be happening? The same thing. It's never, it just hasn't changed. It just seems like the more ridiculous it is, the more relevant they make it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and of course, you know the Bible when it says it's going to turn everything upside down, and sure enough. But they take their severance pay for the rest of their life, uh -huh. whether they hate us or not. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. <laughs> that makes sure. Well, they want a raise now. And they, yeah, uh, they need a raise. Yeah. And the rep reparations. So what kind of raise. Raise. that check's going to be? They need yeah. a raise. They can't right. live off of what they make. To the moon, Alice. <laughs> we ought to, to talk the moon, to them. Let them know what we're living on, eh? Mm -hmm. There's well, I, 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 if they told what we yeah. live on, we're poverty stricken now, don't you know? Well, that's probably where all the rich people I think are going to go. Are. They're going to have to you fight for themselves. Yep. That's all right. You bet. It's yeah. all going to be taken care of one of these days. Amen. Amen. You'll get the last laugh. People up there to cultivate it and get it ready. Get it ready. Yeah. Sure. Make it, make it beautiful. Of seeing that scene in heaven when they're all standing before the great white yeah, throne. Yeah, yeah. Hitler yeah. and all these Muslims and everything. That got to answer enough. to God. If that ain't enough <laughs> to make you shout, nothing will make you shout. Well, that's it, isn't it? So that's what, and we've talked about that, you know. Because mm -hmm. honestly, we can have some joy here. Yes, yeah. we can. Because we know it's closer and we know what's going to happen right. here. When you see these things happening, so lift this. up your eyes to the hills from whence comes. Your help. There you go. Yep. And our help is in the Lord. Amen. Yep. That's right. We can't trust in anything on this earth. You anymore. actually feel sorry for the people no. because they're ignorant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. and you're in a place where you understand yeah. where they're just completely ignorant about the whole well, situation. They're blind. They, they, and you they think remember, the right way. Isn't it something when you stop and think in Revelation where he talks about every single knee will bow? Period. Every exactly. one of them. Everyone. Everyone. And then those that didn't believe Jesus as a Messiah are going to see it. Mm -hmm. I sure pray for some for those guys because I know a lot of Jewish people are really neat folks. I mean, they really are. Right. But and they just can't. I don't believe we're to take joy in their demise. Oh, no. no. I believe no, no, we're to take all. joy that our redemption is no. not. Well, that's what he said to do, you know, didn't he? Uh, Be glad is, your name's in the. Right, there is there is no joy in, in somebody being destroyed no. spiritually. No. Uh, but you know, I mean, we can kind of see why it's happening to them, how, why it will happen to them. You know, but yeah, we're not to take. It gets joy tough when it's fall. family members too, especially. Sure, it does. Sure, it does. It says when they see him, they'll weep for they know yes. who he was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and what they did to him. Oh my. Well, verse 3 says, And it will be in the day when the Lord gives you rest from your pain and your turmoil and the harsh service in which you have been enslaved. So that's announcing the promise of that. And, and a rest from oppression. When did I lose control? <laughs> You're going to have to get that paddle out, Charlie. Get that paddle out. I thought I had my phone off. It goes the other way. To You're go. going to see the principal. You're going to have that's to use it. some tough loads. Yeah, it was me too. Well, heck, that's okay. what then there is that. Yeah, you know. I don't know what she wants. Well, anywho, so he <laughs> announces <laughs> getting rest from the oppression that they've been under. Exactly. Then the verse is called a prodosis. 
which means when. Okay. Literally means when. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 4, actually, because it said, then you will take up this taunter proverb against the king of Babylon and say uh, those words. So when Yahweh mm -hmm. gives you rest, and the verb rest, by the way, is pronounced aniok. That's pretty interesting. It, what's going on here? Well, his phone's dinging now. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to be a teacher now? <laughs> what do you mean, be a teacher? I've been doing this for years. Oh, man, I can't get away world? from it. Oh, I'm sorry, it was Donald Trump. Oh, it was Trump? Yes. Trump was texting you? No, I thought I opted out. Uh, What's he have to say? He says, shut your phone off, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I think thought I, I had it turned off. Trump. Trump. You go I ahead and have a good time. Off, I thought I had it turned off. I did too. It, it dinged anyway. Well, was it anything important? Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying, Lord. I really am. <laughs> I thought I had and it And they're trying off. me. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm patient. I think. Well, that's trying your patience too, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I mean, to be able to pronounce <laughs> Haniok, that's something to me. Yeah. Like it, like you're going to remember that, you know. What's but that, that is a common theme, by the way, in this literature we read, with the, especially the prophetic literature about the future of things, you know, because it picks up that theme. Uh, well, one about the Sabbath and rest, the rest, rest, resting there, that came from the very beginning yes, of creation. You know. Well, Genesis two one uh, three it shows you Sabbath, that. Sabbath. And then there's a conquest of the land too, along with that. And uh, Psalm ninety five talks about it. And then there's an anticipation in these, as you read, of this final restoration that's coming. Um, at the, but it's in the age to come. It's not well in here yet, actually. Hebrews 3 uh, alludes to that. But there is an agent who grants this rest, and we know who that is, don't we? Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's Bartholomew Makasha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where's that? Where's that at? <laughs> I'm just testing you out. Thanks, sir, so. kid Bartholomew. I just wondered if you're really listening. Looking, I, thought, I thought, okay. I figured I could say anything. Uh -huh. How would you, you decide know? that? It just out. came out of me. I don't know. Yeah, well, just, it's the Lord. Jesus, of course, that gives us the rest. Well, like Bart would be short for me. Yeah. <laughs> Bartholomew. Bart's name? No. Uh, uh, get out of here. Well, he said in Matthew 11, yeah. I will give you rest. And that's the Lord. Gives us rest. Yes. 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 Okay. Well, Aren't you glad you came back, Frida? <laughs> Work, you dirty dog. Work. <laughs> <laughs> no rest for the wicked. That's no. my okay. brother in law's name, Bartholomew. So that was in the Pit and the Pendulum. Oh, really? Yeah. It was, uh, with, with what, what Price? His, yeah, Vincent Price's brother was Bartholomew. Oh, okay. I just now remember that for some reason. <coughs> he was like an Eeyore, wasn't he? Eeyore? Mm, his brother? Maybe. I don't remember. I don't. Something like that. I, Eeyore. Eeyore. that was a donkey. I yeah, thought he was, I I thought he was called Igor. That's when he was a donkey. Yeah, no. that is. And Igor, I think, was with the Young Frankenstein was, was no. called young Igor. Young Frankenstein. <laughs> <Fowl Brooker. laughs> There's some funny stuff that these guys have done out there. There's some funny stuff that these guys have done out there. Well, okay. The rest we're talking about then here is from from sorrow, which is Ouch. which is which is announced. Mayat's <laughs> bika. It went off. I didn't know. Uh, we really lost it, haven't we, folks? We, it's well, a windshield we gotta have a little fun now. You guys out there, if you wanted to learn something tonight, forget it. We're just, we just, no, it was loaded. <laughs> We're just gonna, you know, get along. Ow. This is how not to have a Bible study. In case you <laughs> just thought we'd give you the. I'm okay, you know. I know. All right. Oh my goodness sakes! But we also, 
I'm going to get this out, so help me. I am <laughs> wanted rest from fear, too. Yes. yes there's Would a lot you of like to know fear. what the word fear is in the Hebrew? Yeah, what is it? Would you really? Yeah, I would. The Zitka. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> they also want to dress from bondage. Yeah. I suppose you want to know what that says, too. Who abada haka vida. You're making that stuff I'm up. not. Yeah, I'm not. I can't make stuff like that up. I'm not smart enough. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney, Bra say. Rodney, Rodney Brown ought to be here right now. Remember yeah. him? Had the oh. laughing ministry, got everybody in the whole darn oh, congregation. I've, I've heard of him, but no, I've never seen him. Which I don't buy, but, but yeah, you get to laugh and everybody laughs. I mean, come yeah, on. That's true. Watch the little babies laugh. What are you doing? You're sitting there going, no, you're laughing right along. <laughs> laughing. Because <laughs> they're funny. Well, uh, yeah. anywho, there, there you have it. Well, going on, moving right along here. These three expressions we just talked about, in other words, sorrow, fear, and bondage, uh -huh. described, <laughs> we got her started, haven't we? Mm -hmm. It describes the difficulty of the people of God in this fallen world, and we still go through it anyway. Notably, in that day, under the pagan Babylonian domination. <laughs> John, John, what's the matter? Would you get out the squirt gun? <laughs> what happened to her? Do you need some first aid? Yeah. <laughs> it hurt. It was bleeding. I, I seem to lick the blood. Yeah, that's something to laugh about, all right. He's bleeding. <laughs> that's why I said it's okay. <laughs> Gosh, I really do apologize for it, but it's just one of those deals. I didn't mean nothing about it. The first word, <laughs> sorrow, <laughs> is right out of this cursed narrative of Genesis 3. Yeah. Where? Sorrow. Okay. Now settle down, kids. <laughs> Go get the duct tape. I <laughs> In Genesis 3, sorrow comes from pain in childbirth for the woman. <laughs> That'll stop me from laughing. <laughs> I'll take all the joy out of everything. <laughs> I'm trying. Really honestly, I am. And pain in tilling the ground for the man. <laughs> what are you drinking? I want some of that. <laughs> You got Walmart water. I got Niagara. <laughs> well, you know, we need a good laugh yeah. now and again. We really we do. We do. Don't so. we? Have Mary Hart does good like a medicine. Isn't Mary's heart. What about Mary's heart? Sick. What's wrong with Mary's heart? I thought it was all right. <laughs> Something in this water we're drinking up there. Fear and bondage are the other two agonies they talk that Israel would have to experience. And only divine rest, of course, from that would heal it. <coughs> so the fear described here is like agitation or, or quivering or trembling. Good control. <laughs> it's, it's not this pious term for fear or reverence. So the writer anticipates a time when the people are going to be set free from their troubles and sing a victory song. Yep. Verse 4 as we just read here a minute ago, is the apostate. Apoda, I'm not quite sure how to say this one. Apodosis, actually, which means them. Kind of weird, isn't it? When you have this rest, and then, the then, not them, then, you can take up the taunt against Babylon. So the word for taunt is mashal. It's a term normally used for a proverb. <coughs> he beat me to it today. Sucker, you did it again. The man. Just because he has a good tablet. <laughs> but it's, a, it's, it's kind of a sideways saying of observation or uh, similitude, similar things, aphorism. 
and the and the taunt here he's talking about is how the oppressor has come to an end. That's what he's talking about. So the taunt that follows delights in in, the, in this very sudden collapse of the nation of Babylon. And there's two things that are worth noting about that. First, the Assyria was the major threat to them in those early days of the prophet when he was first called. Clear down to the invasion where uh, sent a cherub, and that's what I call him anyway, in 701. But the prophet later turned his attention on Babylon. Remember when the king welcomed the emissary that showed up and and uh, he showed him the treasury? So you have the theme of Babylon in the first half of the book. Um, even though Babylon is not yet the power it's going to become in a few decades. And the prophet here is looking ahead to the enemy who, like Assyria, is going to oppress the people. And the word is that all such oppressors will be destroyed before the great messianic age. They won't make it through. And number two, the destruction of Babylon would lead to the restoration then of Israel, which was in 536 B.C. <clears throat> that doesn't mean by chance. I better shut up. <laughs> they didn't get it. No, they didn't. You know, 536 by chance. <laughs> BC. <laughs> oh, yeah. Light bulb. Oh, yeah, there it is. But the promise of the glorious appearance and reign of the Messiah would not come about in that year or even shortly after. History shows that. Uh, <clears throat> so Babylon is really the immediate fulfillment then at that point. And it's kind of a reference point, too, of that. But Babylon would also typify the greater Babylon, which is of the future, you know. Which actually, Babylon is rebuilt, or a nation like Babylon was. It's kind of hard to say exactly. If you get into Revelation 19, talks about it. Most of them just call it the greater Babylon. The reason that Tobogothi, Tibogothi, I say Tibogothi, I don't know. Anyway, the way the land lays out <clears throat> works is because the real power behind all that and the Empire of Babylon then is the Babylon that's going to come. And and it's the evil one. King Hussein thought he was re uh, Nebuchadnezzar reincarnated. Did he now? Yeah. And he was trying to rebuild Babylon. The Babylon the city of Babylon is located in Iran. Well, that explains a bunch. I mean, Iraq, Iraq, Iraq. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, so the song here is celebrating both victory over these physical enemies and of the people as well as the spiritual powers that are behind the, of these enemies as well. So if we go on here to, uh, you know, I probably am not going to get to it. I, I was hoping I would, but I really truly am going to get to hell Show Hades, Paradise, and the Grave. It's coming next week, I promise. But it's, it's very interesting. It, it is, the study of that. So, <clears throat> but if we look at uh, 5 through 11, and we'll go ahead and read it, because we're going to find out, well, well, let's read it first. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of rulers, which was used to strike the peoples in fury with unceasing strokes, which subdued the nations in anger with unrestrained persecution. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into shouts of joy. Even the cypress trees rejoice over you and the cedars of Lebanon saying, since you were laid low, no tree cutter comes up against us. Sheol from beneath is excited over you to meet you when you come. It arouses for you the spirits of the dead, all the leaders of the earth. It raises all the kings of the nations from their thrones. They will all respond and say to you, even you have been made weak as we, you have become like us. Your pomp and the music of your harps have been brought down to hell, Sheol. Maggots are spread out as your, as your bed beneath you and worms are your covering. Well, that's just dandy. So when evil is judged, it's talking there, the great joy 
and security is going to prevail on the earth. And in hell, great commotion comes about, and but it accompany those entering judgment at that point. <clears throat> then five through eight, of course, talks about then there will be a real great joy on the earth. And in verse five and six, as we read, declare that God's going to break this ruthless tyrant. And the pride of Babylon is focused on this king, the ruthless king, or her kingship in general, and characterized as this, this very proud nation. The terms rod and the term staff, we've, we've, taught, we've heard that used before in the word, refer to the dominion of the pagan rulers. That's what those are, are symbolizing. <clears throat> and so they are the metomenes, they call them, but they're symbols of authority, if you would. And uh, so I want to read this. Says, if, if you argue that there was no rod or staff in their hand as a symbol, then you would have to classify these as hypocostasis implied comparisons. That these are more than just implications. So the point is that the power of those oppressors <coughs> is, uh, is, is to be broken. And that word broken there is talking about Shabar. It says they called with a continued stroke of anger. They afflicted a lot of the nation, but they would soon be broken down. And then another expression of this justice uh, comes on. So they never do win, do they? Babylon fell in one night. Yeah, there you go. Verse 7 is affirming that this, this judgment then is going to bring this great joy to the people, of course. And so the key terms there are this rest and quiet. <clears throat> now, I would have to tell you the, what those uh, terms, rest and quiet, how that's pronounced, I must tell you, you know, in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Nakashakata. Nakashakata. Music, isn't it? Like a shock dog. I was going to say, I've heard shock that song before. Did you say what? You had your dog named that. What did you say? I said, I've heard that song before. Oh. Shock dog. Shock yep. <laughs> John, I'm sorry. I, I speak. I he, speak said, he said the name of the song after I said that. It's 30 years of listening. <laughs> <laughs> You pick up stuff. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you would. Uh -huh. yeah, even subconsciously, it probably comes in, doesn't it? Just eventually. Well, Nakashakata. And the joy or the ringing cry is going to break out on all the earth. And they're joyful shouts, you know. They're exclaiming the cessation of oppression being gone, the beginning of lasting peace. That's right. Verse 8. As you see there, remember we read, speaks of security restored. The trees rejoice since no one has ever come up to cut them down. Now, if that's an implied comparison, then they indicate that Israel might be the trees yeah. and the oppressor, the cutter. But if the actual trees are meant, then the figure would be a personification of the forest, which would be delighted, would they not, that the enemies no longer are going to come and cut through them, cut them down and burn them up in their fires and build ramps and things that they made them out of. Which seems to be what the verse is saying more than the other. Yeah. So you can kind of take it for what it is. Um, we are going to get started a little bit on the health thing. I'm going to have 10 minutes here. Maybe my watch stopped. Mm -hmm. You know, I almost got down here an hour, hour and a half early today. Really? I looked at my watch and I didn't see it right. I was sort of scurrying around. I thought, oh my Lord, how could I be this late? <laughs> then when I realized that, you know, I still had another hour, then I sat down and what happens? You went to sleep. I did. Uh -huh. Gee, there's nothing wrong with it now. No, but when it's in the middle of something, you ought to be doing it. That's the point. Oh, well. Yeah, that's what I thought. What else can you say, you know? Okay. Uh, so... Let's look at 9 through 11. <clears throat> we'll read very quickly. Sheol from beneath. Remember, is excited. Well, didn't we read that? Yeah. I think I already did it. Yeah, yeah we read it. Okay, so we don't need to do that. So, the point is, there's going to be quite a commotion in hell about this. And so, 
So now we're going to insert, I'm going to stop there for a moment. I'm going to insert this study that I found here on, uh, <coughs> on uh, hell and Sheol, as they call it. I, I, am I saying that right? Sheol, I, that's, I think. S-H-E-L-O-L, uh, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Sheol. Yeah. And Hades and paradise and the grave. Yeah. And... Uh, Yeah, I'm getting things mixed up already. See, it doesn't take me long. I'll try to keep this stuff. I got a lot of my own notes and things like that, too. So. Man, I'll make the catfish next week. <clears throat> and that catfish. I th Listen, have you cleaned that thing yet? No, oh, I, mean, I don't put kill, it back. I don't kill them. Why? I want to eat them. It's too big. I'll put it back. Nice. Well, not the whole thing. <laughs> I can't just put his carcass back in the water. <laughs> what? Hey, what happened to that fish? You got no meat on it. The bigger fish might get it. No, I don't. Okay. I was talking about buying some and cooking them. Wouldn't be very tasty, would it? More than likely. Okay. There seems to be, and this will be more of a prelude to what we're going to get into next week. There is, well, there seems to be a bit of confusion a lot of times about the meaning of hell. And who goes there? Yeah. Uh, because of the way the Hebrew word Sheol and the Greek word Hades have been translated in our English Bibles. And that has led some into some uh, error, erroneous understanding of what the Bible is really teaching about the intermediate state and, and the final state of the dead. So we're, that's what this is, why this is being inserted at the point we were just. Uh, end here in Isaiah. Sheol is found in the Bible 65 times and is translated the pit. <clears throat> uh, three times, uh, the grave 31 times, and hell 31 times. Hades is used 11 times and being rendered hell 10 times and, bra and uh, grave once. Grave. Adding to the confusion, there's two other words that are translated hell in the New Testament, and they're tartarus, uh, tartarus rather, and that's found once. How about this? And then Gehenna, which is used 12 times. All these names for the one. So the term hell is commonly understood to mean a piece of torment, piece of torment, a place. <laughs> <coughs> Where the souls of the wicked go after physical death. And that's true. However, because Hades is in the New Testament and Sheol's in the Old, they're uh, uh, variously rendered hell or grave. And so there's been some misunderstanding about what hell and the grave are. Yeah. And before looking at those, though, we're going to give <laughs> our attention to the Greek word of Gehenna, which is always translated hell and used in reference to the lake of fire. And um, and I we've got some verses to read in regard to that, and that's probably where we're going to stop. <clears throat> and then we'll get into more of it as we go. The first place to look here is in uh, uh, Matthew. If you would do that, please, in Matthew 5. And uh, uh, 22, 29, and 30. Matthew 5, 22, 29, and 30. But he says, and, and Jesus, you know, of course, talking, he's talking about murder right into it. He says, but I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court, and whoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court, and whoever shall say, you fool, and boy, that's something I guess we don't want to say shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. Uh-huh. And there it is. In verse 29. And if your right eye makes you stumble, tear it out, and throw it from you. For it is better for you to have that one of your parts of your body perish than for the whole body to be thrown into hell. And there it is there. And then verse 30 goes on to say the same thing, basically. 
Your right hand makes you stumble, cut it off, throw it from you. Better for one of the parts of your body perish than your whole body to go to hell. So those, both those places are talking about that. And then you can look at Matthew uh, 10. <clears throat> Matthew 10, 1 through 28. And this is a big one. I always <coughs> Got a big asterisk by that, you know, and do not fear, and Jesus again, of course, and do not fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who's able to destroy both soul and body in hell. There it is again. And uh, 18, Matthew 18, verse 9. And and again, you've seen this before. And if your eyes cause you to stumble, pluck it out, throw it from you. It's, it's, it's the same thing you were reading a while ago. And the end of your life with one eye, then having two to cast in the fiery hell. In other words, all of these are going to say that. And so that's what, what this whole thing is about. So the, the thing of it is, in, the, in final hell, it is a literal place. And of everlasting fire. And of course, God created that as a place of punishment for Satan, you know, and the angels that followed him. And then, and then his rebellion, excuse me, rebellion against God. Matthew talks about that. But it is referred to as the place of outer darkness. Yes. And Matthew 8, 12, 25, and 30 it talked about that. And in other words, at least our concept, conception of that is that it's probably located at the farthest reaches of the creation. Wherever that is. It's out there somewhere like that. And then Gehenna, of course, is described in Scripture as a furnace of fire. Uh, everlasting punishment. The mist, gloom of darkness, the herd of the second death, lake of fire burning with brimstone, and so forth. But I think we'll stop there and we'll go ahead and start in with the rest of this. Because it, it helps us understand there is such a thing as a holding tank, and if you want to look at it like that. Well, there was certainly back before Jesus got in there and took care of things. It certainly was that. Matter of fact, paradise was in hell. Yeah, and when Jesus came, that changed. Mm -hmm. But there were two parts of paradise, you know. Yes. The good part right. and the bad part. <laughs> so, so there's some neat things to, to, to understand here that, about it. I'm sure people would don't just want to hear somebody preaching all the time about, well, it's hell. You're going to hell. You're no good. Well, now, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Believers aren't going there. Nope. And I think that's something to, to remember, certainly. Well, anybody have any input about anything so far? I mean, for me, I think that somebody lived their whole life and they were good people and did everything they could to help anybody. To think that, you know, they weren't in a place to go to heaven. That being sent to hell, that they would be put in a Hell and tor and fire and torment, living the life they live doesn't make. I mean, to me, it's just. I don't understand how that works together. How a person that tried to be good all their life ends up in it. I don't think it works together. There's only one answer. It's cut and dried. According to the word, it is, isn't it? But then everybody says you're not judged by your works. Is that true? He's talking I don't know. about believers. Yeah, I mean, well, that's where people. But get you're confused. talking about an unbeliever being yes. a nice person. And that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, and people get confused about right. that. Right, right, right. And there's a lot of believers who think they've done right yeah. and they haven't. Yeah. And they're going to be surprised. Jesus said very few would go yeah. in the rapture, particularly because of that. If a person believes that they're going to go to heaven because they're, they're good. They're, mis they're being deceived because the Bible says there's only one way, and that's exactly. Jesus Christ. Amen. That's you can right. be the great. You can be like John Gates and give billions of dollars away, 
that does not guarantee you a place in heaven. Didn't Steve Job, Job talk about that and in his last days? He realized that. I think he did. I think that's a lot of people today. Well, that's well, their mindset. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. That's right. society's way of that's dealing with anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Christianity. Because what you're really saying is, Jesus didn't need to die on the cross for me because exactly. I can get to heaven by my own Yeah, words. yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So you're negating the cross. You're saying Jesus did it for nothing. Yeah, yeah. that's that's true. Right. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I want to know. You know, there's still people on the earth that the gospel hasn't gotten to yet. Right. And say they're tribes. They're, you know, those people are, have died, you know, during the course of all the. Did they not get a chance to get saved? I mean. Well, I think if they did get a chance to be saved, you're not held accountable for something you didn't know about. Well, I I'm think not... that everybody has a chance. The Bible says it doesn't even nature itself. Because down in here, you know it. Yeah, yeah I think they do. Yeah. I think everybody has a natural instinct. Yeah, well, I think we they all have a conscience, but, yeah. but still, there's so many different ways that you can believe, and you know, them people usually huh? are just way out there. I mean, it's, you know, so they don't even know about it. Dreams. No. Dream. Well, doesn't want to give everyone that chance to hear the gospel. Well, that's why he said it will be given as soon as it's given to everybody who had the chance to hear it. That's it. But you know what? Can I add something? Um, when we was on our cruise, this. Oh, earlier this year um, we were in the Dominican and stuff and do you know that all those islands were still celebrating Christmas in January and what did it go through March they do four months so oh, is that right? to me I just wonder yeah. how many people do and do not know about Jesus Christ you know it's just a holiday to them they don't know yeah. Yeah. Well, there's an island someplace I've seen it. There's an island. I don't know if it's off of Indonesia. I don't know where it's at. But they, they've never, people can't even get on the island. They will kill them, and they have. Sure. You try to get on their islands. So they, uh, those were uh, their actual, uh, what are they called, cannibals? I was going to say aborigines, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, these are people that they tried to annex them in the 70s, and they killed a bunch of missionaries. Yeah. That's who she's talking about. And they won't let anyone within in the bay where they live well then they refuse to hear the gospel right and there ain't nothing more god could do for them but they were colonized yeah. there at one time and were taught well at least their ancestors were taught about the bible but they just pushed all the people away well well look at the jews yeah. you know now now jesus came to and them say, yeah. mm -hmm. and because they refused to see him it, they weren't For what they was. were expecting, right, right. and so because they accept to re, to accept him, a lot of them has died. Right, and you know, uh, well, that's of course before Jesus, so they may have been able to. When he went down to hell, he probably he preached the yeah. gospel. That's a lot of my family and saved. My grandma was full blooded to him. So you know, I mean, so. when we willfully reject, like you said, those people. Mm -hmm. I believe God will give everybody a chance. How he accomplishes that, I don't know. I don't know that he can do it. Right. And a lot of these foreign countries are overthrown by ISIS. Yeah. Well, what, of, what about Socialism? the Jews we talked about a while ago? Like mm -hmm. you said, the tears will come. Mm -hmm. That when they realize it. Yes. What happens to them? Well, I think they have a chance to be saved. but In what way? I think they should be saved spiritually. I mean, we don't have any record of how that could, is going to be done. No, okay. we don't know how everything is going to be done. I think what I was trying to get at was, you were talking about different levels. Uh, yeah. Okay, so when you think about that, I mean, are there are there different areas? like you talking about in heaven? Well, I'm just talking about in general. I mean... Depending on well, how we you talk believe, about paradise what you being and, a yeah, place I mean, at uh, first. Is he going to put you here in hopes right that? Away? Depending on yeah, depending on what yeah, you, you know, where I you are. Know. I mean, I don't see how yeah, it's it's I, a either or. It's to just me. a cut and dry deal. Well, you know, in hell, there's greater damnation. Yes, yes. And in heaven, so it says, "Those who believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved." I think you can go to heaven. But you'll but, not have any reward. But doesn't it talk about different levels of heaven? I mean, 
you know. I've not heard that. I've heard it. There, Have you heard that? Yeah, I've heard that. I mean, it's, it's kind of disturbing. Well, <laughs> but you think if you go to heaven, it's going to. Where's it? Where's it say it here? Is what I want. Yeah. I'm gonna to have to look it up and see. If it's yeah. here, yeah. that's one thing. Yeah. But if it's not in here, forget it. Yeah, that's true. No you one gotta right. know if that's right. I'm just telling you things we hear. I just, and, oh, I know, know. Understandably, you me, I do. It's I'm, just, and I've had a concern too about thing things. Because I got just God. Yes, right. and, and I, I, I is every person an opportunity. I've been raised. I you believe or you believe or you don't. Too, so. That's exactly. how I was raised. I think so too. And if you don't raised, says that, uh, do you believe in God or you don't believe in God? That's it. It's just yeah. how it is. But, yeah. You can't even make it something that's not. Even no. in those countries, like Muslim countries, where they don't allow any Jesus yeah. has been appearing to those people and they've been getting saved. Look yeah, at China. Because yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. man, they've been. Oh, wow. so, they want that stuff gone. Yeah, they do. And I'm sure that, you know, all yeah, over there's like people there. in their governments, you know, keep them Killed from them. learning Killed and them. stuff. But God will provide a way. I was shocked, though, on all those islands that, you know, they were as Christian as they were. Okay, Apostle in the King James Version of two, 2 Corinthians 12, 2 is said to correspond to the celestial bodies and glory of the sun mentioned in 1 Corinthians. It's where they're trying to get this first, second, and third. Well, you're, or you're probably trying to say where heaven is literally located. They're saying it doesn't say heaven has levels. Three degrees of glory is what they were calling it. It's the oh, LDS uh, Church. Oh, well, thank yeah, you very they, much. There is a, they're but, called what? The LDS, it's called the LDS Church. Oh, well, that? Have you heard of that? Oh, Latter -day, Latter -day, Latter -day Church of Latter day Saints. I know they're Mormons. They're Mormons. <laughs> they're Mormons. Mormons. See, but this stuff gets thrown <laughs> around everywhere. People get confused. Well, they yeah, changed the word. You know, yeah. What's the Bible say about that? Yes. I was going to say one more thing. Okay. Just like Hillsong. We have been to, we have seen mm -hmm. Haiti. We've seen it on our trip because it's on the other side, Dominican Republic. Oh, yeah. And we have been to Haiti, which is in southern Missouri. And I don't care to go back to either, so. <laughs> it was all, listen, the Haiti, Haiti, Missouri was all black people. And I'm going to tell you something. They were the nicest. They were. Most helpful people you ever meet. In life. Yeah. Well, you remember about what happened in Haiti some years ago. Missionaries went over there. I mean, that's the most demonic place, one of the yes, most is. demonic places anywhere. Yeah. Well, and see, some of those people in the Dominican, you know, oh, they, also like that. they said, they said that's hate, that's Haiti over there, but cool. some of them don't even acknowledge. Aren't they? Uh, did not that a place that general or something was killing? He was, Haiti. He was killing uh, his these other people and eating their hearts, and okay. they finally found they caught him and killed him. But and it's then also that group a place did that to him. Where missionaries went over and started preaching, and overnight that country turned around. Yeah. Even to the extent that the water cleared up overnight, man. That's all it takes. And 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 fruit and stuff was growing within days. Sure. I, believe I mean, it. I mean, it was delivered, boy. Sure. I believe it. Just like Nineveh. I don't know if it's that comes away. back to saying this country needs to get back to what. Yeah, well, we need right. salvation yeah. here Just because like it's withering away. We yeah. talked about, you know, sure is. where Mary and Judah. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at our government. And without God. If people don't even know who Ju what Judah is, was, yeah. probably. Or a lot of them I don't, I guess. I don't know, but, but well, we're going right after what they did. If we don't get some God-fearing people back in our government where they need to be, we we're going to be in trouble. We don't get some God-fearing people in the church who will spend time in prayer. I was going to say. It's got to be the prayer. It's going to be a bigger mess than it is. Second Chronicles 7.14 just says that's it right. there. My people who are called by my name, that's who he's looking at. Yeah. yeah. But wouldn't he's it be good to have them in a there. place like that as well? Yes, it would. That's, that's it, though. Well, it yes, that's it. Well, I don't remember who said it, but as a, said the government goes as the church goes. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah, there it is. It it's being corrupted for, for years. For I know we could sit yeah. and talk all night about this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Jesus said, I, I, I just have to go by that because I'm the truth, the way, the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. And, and you only go to the Father through me, and that's it, period. 
Yeah. The, and no the story. Way. But I still believe that. I think people are on this kick to where uh -huh. they can do what they want because, well, you know, we're being are. told that, you know, you're going to be sent in a place like, yeah, what's that called? Uh, not being taught, just, yeah, just you know, not being taught. Purgatory is what Purgatory I and yeah, this and that. that. Yeah. You know, when I was growing up, it is as it is. Do you believe it? Or? Well, I'm going to pray. Go ahead. Okay. But I do want to say one thing. I saw a movie, mm -hmm. and it was some kind of movie because it, it was it talked about four policemen that were based on their lives. But the whole point was that 99, I can't about 99, 90 some percent of the problems that young people are having is because there's no dad in the family. Oh, yeah, sure. Period. That, that's big a, that one, one, that's one of the big things big that really created it. Yeah. Uh, another thing is the church just stood by and let everything go down the tube, you know, take prayer out of school. That's yeah. okay. We don't want to upset nobody. Right. We don't want to be fanatic. Was that that movie, Courageous? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Did you? That's decent. Well, they blamed I, I, everything on the mail for they? so long. Oh. That, I yeah. was invited out to that church in Balco. We're going to watch that. I haven't seen it, but um, she's seen it, I think. Yeah, I've seen it. Well, I was invited out there to watch it. For what? That that movie? Mm -hmm. That's that Casting about? Crowns. Yeah, and mm -hmm. oh, Casting Crowns sings the, oh, all the yeah. songs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, you were made to be courageous. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead, Charlie. So. Yeah, Father Almighty God, Lord. Well, Father, I mean, we see all the corruption and the, everything that goes on, but Lord, still there's a lot of beauty here, but it's all in you. Help us to see that too. Help us to have that kind of joy, knowing that you are in control of all of these things, because we honestly believe that, and that you somehow, through us, and others that could open the eyes of people's hearts to you, Lord God, because the time is short and your word is stating it. We're seeing it. We're feeling it. Uh, you can't, we don't want to bury our ha heads in the sand, Lord, because it's a ride all around us now. Help us be Christ-like. Help us be that, that light that people can see in the darkness and mean it. But to do it in a love, not in a judgmental attitude or, or an attitude of fear or anything negative like that at all. But rather to have that personal love you have for us, that agape type of a love, and we'll love in spite of them. And that's what we ask. And thank you for the information that you give us, and we just ask more of it as we continue to study your word and come closer to you in the process of doing it. Father, we thank you for it. I have asked a special blessing on this church that you would bring the people in, those that need to be here, those that need the help, uh, to be close to you, Lord God, to hear it because it's being preached. And it needs to happen. So we just ask you to have your way here. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. The glory certainly is yours. And we exalt you in all ways in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. And just leave money over there. Unless she's laughing. How much you got to give me? I hope you find it over there.